script these parameters. Okay, so let's do the practice time. Mm, first of all, uh, the REPL uh, application looks like this. It's a menu that, uh, that is displayed on the screen. And this is the menu in the form of a string. And as you can see here, we have uh, echo main menu. This is going to print my menu. It's going to print a line. And then uh, we create the options in this script to be easy to read on a column. Doesn't matter how many spaces you you use in the script. Um, this this particular is a string, and it's on many lines. You can see this is supported uh, in Bear. So now let's see. Um, the statement we have a statement which is called select statement and the select statement is uh, reading an option from the menu you see the menu here this is the menu this is def defined here so this is a variable and this is the value of the variable so the selection is a loop and we start the loop with do and then we execute the block this is the block of the loop and then done the block of the loop analyze cases so you can have um, the, the, the statement case and unlike other languages you don't have to repeat the case you just use it once this is like a switch so you use case and then option this is the option and then in so we can have uh, first option exit, second option hello, print the options here. So we enumerate the options here, and only one option is possible. And if the option is exit, then we just say goodbye and then break. You can see semicolon here because there are two actions echo and break, and then two semicolons. This is the way to uh, finish one option. And then uh, we have several options. In case of hello, you see hello here, we can have hello. And then we execute the function hello, which is not shown in here, in here but I'm going to show you how it's working. So when you want to execute the script, you say source and then the name of the script with the dot slash in front of it and that's how you start the script so this is this is all this is how a repeller application look like but what it does so the repeller application is a read execute print loop and is available as a repository on github so it's uh, available on REPL uh, ID um, and it's open source. So this application REPL uh, is a style of making applications which usually are command line applications. So it start, then display the menu and then waits for the user to enter an option using command read Then read the options. And then we have the statement case the case can have a help and display the menu again. And then the case has different options and it's going to execute one or another or another. And then it's, it's going to exit if the option is to exit. <clears throat> okay, but after it's the finishing one of the options, then it's printing out output. And then it's asking a question if you want more. Uh, this question maybe is not present and it's just a prompt. So it's displaying the prompt and then waits for the read, another option. This is a loop. So in, in mm, other languages, this loop is executed with a switch. Mm, this is a, called selection, but in Bash we use case. 
So there, uh, if you scan this uh, barcode, then you open the repository for for this application that I have it, and uh, the you can investigate. So <clears throat> how is working? So you, maybe you have a tablet. That's why I have I have this link here. Uh, so bash on GitHub. So uh, this um, REPLE is on my personal profile. I should move it into the search code, but for now it's just a research, my own research. So it's a, it's an application, personal application, and it's called Bash REPLE. So the, here I have some examples, and not all examples are included in the menu. So I have more examples than the one included in the menu. So um, you can learn uh, this presentation is not uh, is not gonna teach you everything, right? This presentation is gonna teach you is gonna highlight several features of Bash, but there is a reference manual, of course. But the reference manuals are boring. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they are, but I also maybe I am boring too. So maybe programming is boring after all, but um, even Bash, Bash is even more boring than usual. So uh, you have to be, as a programmer, you have to have patience. You have to have patience and uh, knowledge is more important than that, but then to have fun. Then. So, so if you want to have fun, then maybe you should watch other streamers that are much more fun than me, but what they can give you is no more knowledge. So um, you can scan this and then you can see the reference manual. And this is a dyno here, but they don't have anything to do with this dyno. It's uh, created by a Google uh, barcode. But this barcode is created by Google barcode creator, which is very easy to access it's from from your uh, Chrome, and the Chromium does this beautiful barcode for me, and I just copy it here. But this is pointing to a reference manual that I vouch for it. It's a very good manual. So um, we're gonna learn next uh, the bash commands, but uh, before I learn, uh, I teach you bash commands, I'm gonna show you the repli. I have an app and uh, this app is supposed to see now a uh, run command here. And uh, <clears throat> this is an app that is connected to Repule, my account, bash Repule, you see. And it has some features. Uh, first of all, you can open a shell. Here I have opened a shell. Uh, if you don't have this tab open, then you can you can open it, right? You can open many files. So let's see. You have open a shell, new tab, shell. You see, this is the shell, and let's clear. Uh, okay. No, no, this is the shell. I see here uh, it's a dollar sign, and uh, this means I'm in in my project past triple. And then all the scripts here are available for me to execute, right? All the scripts. So um, the main script, the main script is here. So let's open the main script. This is the main script. Let's see. Uh, I have a function in Bash. You have to define the functions first before you call them. I have, for example, two functions: function hello and function print. Two functions. But then I have the main menu uh, defined. So just I just print echo. You see, uh, these are functions and these are rebel statements that are outside of any function. These are global statements. So these statements are executed top down. But the functions are not executed, just defined. So the functions are defined. Then we display echo main menu. Okay. 
and uh, I don't have any idea if somebody is on the chat. I hope nobody is on the chat, but if it is, as I apologize because I'm not interacting. But let me fix that. Let's see if it's somebody on the chat. So you can investigate the program yourself, but uh, you need to connect to Repula. So for that, I have to post a message on the chat. So let me see if I can do that. Um, first of all, let's go back a little bit. And, oh, oh sorry, too much. Let's click here, and then this is the reference manual, okay? Yeah, not good. So let's go, let's go to the other link. This is the repo. If I clicked here, I'm visiting in my browser the repo, and you're not gonna see it until I share it. So let's let's share it. Um, Hello, Dan Talks. Thank you for joining. So this is the link that I want to share on chat. All right, so I have posted a link here. Um, you can see it. Let's continue. Um, after we, we define the menu, then first, uh, um, next statement is the select statement, which by the way is supposed to be blue, but um, this statement is not recognized. So it's it's still a, a statement, uh, so you start with select, then option. This variable doesn't exist, but it's created automatically. Because the select option in menu is verifying all the options in the menu, right? And here I not need semicolon. I think it, I don't need semicolon. So do. And then echo, and then uh, I'm repeating a uh, separator. This is the most uh, stupid uh, thing to do because uh, you have to repeat uh, one character many times. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know how to do it otherwise. So I just do that. And then I do the case exactly what I showed you. And then here is what is going to be displayed. And then a suck. Okay. This is this is a case, you see the case is not recognized, but the SAC is recognized. Strange, right? The the syntax color doesn't work correctly on Ripple IT website. But it uh, doesn't matter, the program uh, will function, and then done, and that's it, that's the program. So that's the, that's the main program. So you see all the, I have separation of concern. Because the menu is here in the main program, but all the logic is outside. I just left inside two procedures, the uh, hello, the hello, and then the print. And then uh, everything else is um, executed outside. I don't know if case is correct here. Uh, it's the correct called the case. The case is not correct called because it's not internal. So if it's not internal, I, it's not going to work. I think it's not going to work. So let's see. Uh, let's execute this. So I, I'm executing. So you, I say bash. Then in the name of the program main dot sh. And you can see start. First of all, it's displaying main menu. Then the main menu is miraculously displayed like this in this form. I didn't format it anything. I didn't that anything. I just said select. And the string is parsed and these numbers are popping up.
if you know my story, you know that I was sick of COVID. That's why I'm staying from bed. Because I'm still here. And, um, and this is the menu. Let's uh, do some options. Option 2. I press 2 and then I press enter. And hello world. And that's uh, waiting. This prompt is out, uh, also created automatically. I didn't create this prompt. Uh, the yes question mark. It's the prompt created by the select statement. Do you see? So now this, the fourth statement. Let's do another statement. The if statement 3. You see, I'm going to this. Uh, show you the uh, every sc every script, but uh, let's run se several cases, and uh, let's r run the the print ten. Hello there, you see, print. And then uh, let's uh, let's uh, exit, right? Let's exit. One exit. Goodbye. That's it. This is my beautiful app with the menu. Which I have worked a lot for it, and, uh, and then I have got bored. And after I finished 13 examples, I didn't put them in the menu anymore because I know how to run a particular script. For example, if I want to run the array script, right? I just say bash and then array sh. I don't need the main menu for it, so I already have the, the scripts and I can run the script directly. This is what you can do, but it's for demonstration purpose I've created a menu. So uh, here the uh, the bash array, this is what it does, it's, it's writing something to the console. So if, uh, in, the, uh, in my presentation in, and in my class, I'm going to use these examples to teach you um, a bash. So you can clone and uh, you can uh, investigate the code on your own computer. Right, so I finished presentation for my examples. Let's continue with the, um, with the slides. Oh yeah, so the reference manual again, you can scan it now, then you can look at it. Uh, let's see the bash commands. I'm on tablet now, and uh, if you don't see me talking, then it means I'm doing something else, so you have to be patient. But uh, you can read yourself um, the slide. You, if you remember, this is the logo for the bash script, and uh, the, it's uh, just a command and a dollar sign, and that's, that's the, uh, the logo. So I'm not going to read the slide, but you have to read it because otherwise you're not going to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I give you time to read. So the parameters, uh, I'm sorry, this has happened to me again, I don't want to, uh, it's because of my missing a mouse, and the mouse is just too sensitive. So the building commands are built in uh, because they are 
part of the operating system okay so uh, uh, so if you learn the commands then you can um, you know interact with your computer in command line so um, the commands have one or two parameters and that you can specify with one dash mm, in long names you can specify with double dash like this dash dash name parameter is specified in the manual so so here is an example you uh, ls minus l star sh it's kind of difficult to remember right for a beginner but uh, mm -hmm. ls is as an abbreviation from list um i type very fast and i didn't mind if they could they have used the entire name list but for some reason in the past people believe that typing is expensive and they have just said ls which i don't like and they disagree with this idea they're supposed to use longer name for comments so how to find documentation for the comments so the best documentation i found is over right here uh, dev tokyo bash building and uh, you can scan this barcode for getting the documentation mm -hmm. so don't worry about it i have the documentation on my discord where i have links to resources and don't be stressed if you don't scan this code right now you don't have to it is just a, a convenient way to check the documentation using two devices so you can watch this presentation on the video and then you use a tablet to navigate on documentation but then let's see the notes here you can call documentation in the shell and you can use man command to list the commands okay also here the, these are the built-in commands you see they are displayed here in the shell i have run the command man command man it means manual hmm. so the command man exists in all the shells if they are not simplified so if uh, if that operating system is complete supposed to have a manual and the manual is text it's a text so you you can read it right but uh, which are the building commands so i'm gonna shortly describe the building commands but you don't have to learn them on top of your head right now they're in the documentation right and <clears throat> we're gonna teach you only the most important commands that are helping you to think like shell script so to to understand my next examples right <clears throat> so so for now it's good, good to just review the description for these commands and i'm talking a little bit so please read the description it's very important to read the description i know it's boring but this is how you learn by reading so you you have to read so <clears throat> first of all this simple command that is column um it's uh, doesn't do anything uh, it's uh, it's returning zero it doesn't do anything at all but sometimes you need uh, this command in your syntax to do nothing so um, it's like pass pass uh, is a command in uh, python so m m it's an empty command many programming languages using uh, empty command semicolon semicolon is also kind of empty command but uh, dot is uh, has many usages uh, but the most important usage in the command line is Mm -hmm. 
read and execute commands from file parameter and then return. Yeah. I have no idea what it means. <laughs> Honestly, the, the dot, the dot usually means something else, but uh, in this description, it's something that I don't know and I don't really understand. Okay, sorry. But uh, I have to research that. So, break exits from the enclosing for a while. Uh, okay, break is a command that is used especially in the scripts and it's uh, for uh, exiting the loop. CD, this is a popular command, CD, change directory, change the current location. Because in bash, when you work in bash, when you start bash, it has a local current directory. The current directory or current folder, in, it's, it's a folder called on Windows and this directory called on Linux. So uh, you can change it using the cd command so one directory is the current directory you cannot have more and uh, everything is referring to the current directory so if you start the uh, descriptor for a file you have to refer use uh, from the current directory continue uh, it's using loops um, it's uh, it's a shortcut in a in script loop. Echo is printing something on the console. Eval is evaluating. Exec is executing. Uh, yeah. So if you have link to my presentation, these actually are links to documentation, right? So that's why they are blue. And if you press this link here, it's gonna jump to into a document manual. So my presentation has links on it, but you don't have access right now on the presentation slide. You have to be a member of Discord on my community to be able to have access to this presentation. So the exit command is executing out of the script. Let's see, pvd is displaying the current directory. This is very useful. Read is reading the input. Um, return, of course, is used in functions to return a result. Um, mm, I cannot read everything, right? Because I don't have time for it. Um, but this is more commands, right? So, um, actually, type is very useful command because type is telling you about other command, what kind of command it is. So. If you know the command name, then you say type, and it's going to tell you if it's an external command or an internal command. That's very interesting, type, but it's not about the data type, because bash doesn't have data type, remember? Okay, so that's, that's that. And uh, now let's go ahead with the syntax. So. Don't be stressed about learning the commands yet. So um, that's part of the operating system. You, sooner or later, you have to learn all the commands to do, be able to do uh, programming with Bash. So the commands are like functions, but uh, building commands are very special because they are very fast because they are inside the Bash. So once you start the Bash, all those commands are available. So now let's see the, the stream redirection. This is a, a theory that you have to learn about Bash. So uh, every command can use input and output and their own stream. So, so there are three streams, input, output, and error. Okay, so they are very logic organized. Each stream has a number associated with it called file description. Because a stream is behaving like a file. So operating systems uh, uh, are mapping th this uh, descriptor to names. So in in Linux and in Mac, you're gonna have the dev. Dev is an artificial folder representing the devices. Dev uh, set a day in is st it's standard input, and it has symbol zero, descriptor zero. 
file descriptor one is standard output and two is the error standard error so these are synonyms so the file descriptor two and this notation they're synonym so the uh, windows do not provide these descriptors but they are emulated by the emulator that you're using Redirection. Sometimes it's useful to capture the output and uh, and uh, that's it, the redirection. Redirection. So normally the redirection goes to the standard input uh, output, but you can redirect it. So um, what it means redirection? It means instead of going to normal standard output, which is the console, it's gonna go into file for example if it's going into file then it's going to be written on the disk the output of a command can be written on disk and that's useful because for example not all the time you want a list of directories on your eyes uh, sometimes you want to do something with this list so you list it into file and then you produce a file that has a list of directory for example but everything can go into a file whatever command you do for example if you use the sort command which is an external command you can sort the file and then you produce another file from it so this is uh, this is how linux work with this uh, combination of and and the uh, vertical bar in other languages these particular uh, symbols are between operators but um, in bash commands there have a different meaning and we use greater than and less than but this has a, a role of like an arrow and is not less greater than and less than in the command line so in the command line you have a, like this notation come you write a command which can be whatever not the word command it can be a real command like ls for example and then file is a new file that is going to be created so this is the notation you use command greater than file and then this is redirecting the output to a file and then if you want to uh, append to a file you say say command greater than greater than file and this is a shift right in between operator but don't be confused this is not shift in the command line so it's a little bit tricky to read right because if you're a java developer or something uh, you know that this operator means shift but is not shift in bash so this command here is accepting the input from a file accept the input to read from a file so there are commands that need input commands are waiting for input and you can provide input from a file but the command need to know what to do with the input so the command is reading the input and you can create a long command from many short commands in uh, bash so you you can you can add commands one to another using this bar vertical bar so let's uh, see compl com concrete examples these examples um, have been tested by me so they're not copied from documentation uh, yeah they are but uh, they are modified all right so i have understood them i put comment in it so then maybe a little bit different but uh, this is standard uh, way of uh, input redirection because it's a little bit more complicated accept input redirection using symbol less than in script we can use a loop to read the input stream so uh, so while read line well, you know while uh, we already done in the last presentation the control loop, uh, statements if you don't know control statements in bash then you have to look at the, my previous presentation right i don't explain how the loop will work here but uh, it's a strange way i mean a different way to use the while loop 
So this is what the language support. So while read line, do echo line, then def set the in. A little bit strange, right? So this is the redirection input, redirection into a loop. So the loop accept the redirection of, from this notation. Uh, this is a syntax choice and uh, it's a design pattern and you have to learn this is as it is. Uh, it's like feeding the loop. But the it's not telling you from where you read here in the while. It's telling at the end where you read from. So you read line from where? From here. Okay, so this is how you read the, a file. A standard input. So um, here we have bash input and then again you have to use the redirection to read the file. And the test text there is a file that I have created, and that file contains four lines. This is a test, second line, third line, end of line, end of file. This is with the content of text txt, and was printed line by line using this loop. Of course, now that you read a line, you can do something else with the line. You can parse the line into words, for example, or whatever. Whatever you want to do is the uh, information from the file. I just print it out, but it can be complicated processing, right? So I hope you understand this. It was hard for me to understand I'm coming from Python and other languages. I never, I never seen this uh, way of doing programming before. So uh, if you type something in the chat, I'm going to see, uh, is anybody here? As usually, nobody wants to learn Bash, <laughs> but uh, I still record this because my website needs a video for every course. So I have a uh, plan to do 20 courses and uh, so far I managed to do several of them but I'm in process of recording video for every single course so this is uh, one of my most important courses because it's for software engineering and uh, part of the software engineering is to learn bash if you're a software engineer and you don't know any programming language but you know bash then it's good enough, so you can find a job as a software engineer if you just don't know anything else but Bash. So let's see the output redirection, how you, you do it. Please read a little bit. First of all, I didn't show you yet, but uh, if you make a script, you can enclose a command in uh, parentheses. And if you enclose it into parentheses, this is called command group. But usually a command group has more than one command. And here I have only one command. That's why I have a note here that is explaining that I could have used without parentheses. So if you create a script, inside the script you can have a redirection for, for example, for a list command, list to directory, and then this file is popping up on the disk in the current folder, in the, in the current directory that is uh, for the particular script. So usually it's the same directory where you started the script from. Otherwise, we have to specify where to do the output. And uh, 
this is another redirection that is appending the key done into the same file that was created here so the file is created and closed automatically so here is uh, the output the output is here uh, text there of course so i have opened that file and the, this is the output and then the the word done you see so this is uh, this is how the directory are listed in linux these flags here if you don't know what they mean they're access flags they're telling you who has access to the file and there are three groups one two three one two three one two three so three or three groups total nine groups so um it's very difficult to explain the r means read w means write and x is execute but none of this file is executable none of this file is executable but if you want to execute a script that script has to be executable so it has to have x otherwise you have to run bash uh, you cannot execute the script directly Oh, now let's continue with the command pipeline so you can you can connect one command uh, output to the command input okay so so this read so So let me explain the syntax okay um this is a syntax uh, the the ignore the square brackets right so you can say time and oh this syntax if you don't know bnf bnf means uh beautiful notations <laughs> i don't know what it means it's a language that this is a language that describes a command but uh, if you don't know bnf you're not gonna understand here but uh, uh Mm, the command pipeline is using bar vertical bar okay so here is an example and uh, you can see the prompt the prompt is finishing at the dollar from here the command starts ls minus l star dot ch you have seen this command before and then bar more more is a program that accepts input and is uh, so stopping when the screen is full uh i have stopped it early i have made a small screen so the more the more messages is is here and then it's waiting for you to press enter if you press enter or space then the next row or the next page is going to show so this is a convenient way to stop scrolling uh, when you have a command that is running and is displaying a lot of output so be, to be able to to do pay, page by page so this is the command pipeline and of course you can have another command here that accept the input so the output is redirected to another command it's called pipe then you you actually not use the redirection the redirection is writing the output to a file but uh, uh, for uh, doing the output into another command, you use the pipeline operator. Uh, uh, it's a little bit difficult to remember. Maybe you do a mistake, but if you do a mistake, a new file is going to pop up, uh, which is called more. So, uh, so don't do that mistake. <laughs> So um, there is a possibility to create in process command groups. So if you have more than one command that you want to run them into one thing, like a single command, then you close them in curly brackets. 
for example here I have uh, a command that I'm running and this is not another sub process it's the same process and it's running two commands so two commands grouped into one so you just start to squiggly bracket and then with squiggly bracket and you put the commands separated by semicolon you see one command here another command here and then this variable was defined global and is known inside and outside you see uh, it was modified so if i put i equals zero and then a plus one and then if i print a this command was able to modify my global variable so uh, that's pretty cool right So subshell command groups. So this is another grouping, another way of grouping commands. Is read about the shell command group. So what is means subshell? It means that a new process is created, a new command line that is invisible to you basically start, and that's a new instance of the sh shell. It's called subshell. When the subshell starts, it creates its own local variables. It's independent than current shell. So, um, if you create, a, if you modify the variable inside, um, if you do, do this, you see, I tried to modify the variable p, and I managed to do it, but it's inside is three and outside is two again you see uh, the modification that you do inside the this subshell is not propagated outside of subshell i can see the variable is passed is passed as a parameter of somehow it's all the variables are visible inside the group but it cannot be modified okay so this is another way of so there are two ways similar one is with a bracket uh, squiggly bracket one is with run bracket both of them are command uh, but one is in process command and this is subshell command now uh, we finished with the examples we finished to explain a little bit about uh, the command groups and now we can continue with uh, with advanced bash this is my last section for today and uh, don't think i'm going to continue this course with the third uh, presentation because um, there are two uh, few people that want to learn bash and there is plenty of documentation that you can continue on with that okay so let's see what I got for here. So first of all, I have a list of external commands. So what are external commands? These are not in a bash shell. So they have to exist on your computer and they are located somewhere in your computer and they're in the path variable. This is an environment variable path. We start with dollar path. Um, that's our external commands that are found in path. You can list the external commands using ls uh, uh, usr bin star. And uh, this is going to list the commands that are installed on your computer. But you can have basically or any Linux program basically is a command so you can install many commands on your operating system some of them are installed in usr bin folder some of them are installed somewhere else but they, they have to put them into the path otherwise they are not actually commands they are programs so once you have put them in path they begin external commands so first the command that is external is the manual 
and uh, list all the file names, folders, dates, creation, and other sort of stuff. LS list uh, of file names. More, I already use it. Less is similar to more. Zip, cut, make a dir, uh, error means remove a file or directory. Vim is start a popular text editor. SSH starts secure remote shell. SGP start a copy command that can be push uh, can push files over SSH. So these are very important. SSH is one of the most important, and SGP also important. But maybe more is very useful and handy. Uh, manual actually it's man, not manual. So let me fix my presentation right now. This is not manual, it's man. Okay, so maybe you'll learn better if you see me fixing. Uh, let's see again um, another another feature that is advanced. Uh, you maybe you remember we have used uh, ampersand ampersand for and and vertical bar for or two vertical bars for or. So with this in Bash you can create uh, a chain of commands and. Uh, the chain of commands, uh, if one of commands fail, then uh, another command is executed. And if it's successful, then uh, another command is executed. So it's like a workflow. You can create a workflow in a single command. So if you want to do a chain of commands, then uh, you first of all start with a condition, and if you remember the conditional, the conditional is enclosed in double, uh, double square brackets or single square brackets. But in this case, it has to be double square bracket because I'm using uh, I'm using eventually log file names. That's why. So minus f log file name. Um, and then is this true? If the file exists, then it's true. So it says echo found because this is when and this is when it's true and this is true. So it has to be evaluated. This one, but this one doesn't have to be evaluated except if if it's not found. But uh, if it's not found, then this is evaluated. It's like I'm using if. Uh, statement, but I'm not using actually a statement. I'm using this technology that is called chain of commands. So you can use the operator, uh, a logic operator to uh, do action. Okay, so now, oops. No, oh, Hey, 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 oh, my substitution, I apologize. Mm, I'm still not used to this, uh, this setting. I'm working on a laptop and I'm using a laptop Macintosh mouse. It seems like it's not so good as the PC mouse and uh, the settings is very minimalistic. Just using a tablet and a laptop. I don't have big screen monitors anymore. Because I'm sick. Uh, command substitution has two forms. First form is using the dollar command list, and second is we are using uh, squiggly bracket. I mean, uh, backs back backwards backwards command list. These are backwards. Very difficult to find. On the keyboard, the commands is replaced uh, by its output in string or expression. This is the command substitution. So, if you have a command, you remember the command uh, you can enclose in brackets. If you run a command enclosed in brackets, in, to get the, the result, 
you put dollar in front of it and this will transform the output into a string so um here for example command substitution in expression here equal dollar and then command this is the command enclosed in brackets so the result of the command is going to be injected into this expression dir equal something and that something become value for dir so let's uh, do an uh of for for file in dir dir is a uh, like you know a list of files because this is a list of files all the of the sh and uh, then i'm say echo file and then uh, for file in star sh do echo file actually here is an error it's supposed to be dot but uh, let's see what is the idea so i have said bash substitution this is the work directory args uh, demo sh But instead of this and doing this complicated stuff, you can replace it by this. You can just say for file in, and here is a pattern of files, and then ego file. This works too, but it seems like for some reason didn't. It's a, there is an error here. Here you are, you can f fix it later. Mm, okay, I'm gonna fix it later. Right. Okay, so now let's see um, a very advanced concept, which is parallel programming, and this is called forking. And in Bash, you can do parallel programming, parallel computing. That's amazing, right? But how? It's very simple. You, um, for example, if you have a main process, you start main process, then you split the process into child, um, several children, and the, maybe the children have the same duration, but some of them may be taking more time. But whatever you do, many children here, then you have to wait. You have to synchronize your processes and then exit. Because if you exit too early and you don't wait for all the processes, maybe the processes will not finish and you exit the, the stream. And that's, you don't know what is going to happen with the processes. They are there in the memory of the computer and they may be not doing anything, but uh, maybe they are going to finish, but uh, you're not, not going to know what to do with the output. But if you wait, then I'm going to show you how to handle it. So, so this forking creates coprocesses, subprocesses, right? So this is how you create a performant application by splitting the work into more sub-processes which can be executed in parallel on different core processors. So you have a parallel execution. But uh, what the secret is to use this notation. For example, I want to do four threads and sleep different time for every thread. So I just say sleep and then I use uh, ampersand and this ampersand is a miraculous symbol this ampersand is like a chain but it's not a chain it's just telling me that this particular uh, stream is executed into another process asynchronously asynchronously so if I put the, if the last if the last character in the command is the ampersand is blank blank ampersand then this ampersand is telling the process to start another process. So I can start my sleeping several times and then I'm waiting, echo waiting, but this is doesn't doesn't do anything, doesn't wait. But I this does wait, I'm waiting. So and this is waiting for all the processes to finish. Which one is gonna be finished first? This one, sleep two then sleep 5, and then sleep 10, and then sleep 12. But in total, 
it's going to take only 12 seconds because this is the longest all others are shorter and they are all done at the same time I finished <laughs> so now you do parallel processing in bash mm -hmm. okay so let's uh, see a short example other example and this is explaining more that what I have done what I have explained already but you can read now okay so read per, please Okay, thank you for reading. So this is another mistake that I have done. So going back, and I don't know how to do or fix my mouse. Uh, sorry. So coprocesses. Let's see coprocesses. The coprocesses are similar, but a little bit more advanced. So coprocesses. Not necessary. You have many processes, but only one. So you have the main process and then you start the coprocess. So you have two processes. And this coprocess, maybe it's only one, but maybe you have more than one. So you do parallel computing using coprocesses. Coprocesses are a bit more advanced. And uh, mm, I think they are implemented in a later version of Bash. And um, how you do it? You start co coprocess by using keyword coproc. Coprocesses are asynchronous, similar to command uh, using ampersand. Because uh, the coprocesses are provi providing a data pipeline, which is called coproc. Okay, coproc. And this is an array. Uh, of two streams, zero and one, and um, and the the input for the coprocess is coproc of one, and the output is coproc of zero. Coproc of one is the input, and coproc of zero is the output. So let's see how we do a coprocessor, coprocess, coproc echo who am i and then echo coproc coproc of all and, and this is all parameters and echo coproc pid coproc pid and then read r user uh, coproc zero <laughs> so this is reading the user of variables that i have created from the output stream yeah so it's a bit uh, geekish but if you don't have any question that i cannot answer so you're not live you're missing the opportunity to ask me questions i don't know if you understand this but this is it so coprocesses it's good to know that they exist if you need to do parallel computation in bash then this is the way to go we're using coprocesses thank you for watching i have finished congratulations you know bash and scan the qr code and read the articles and take the quiz because i have done an effort on searchcode.net to create articles for um, bash uh, learning bash and the articles are different than this presentation the articles are more detailed and friendly uh, i have used a good style so you can read it on your second monitor on portrait mode 
no ads, no interruption, and no subscription and no login. So you just read like a book. It's a, a, f a free open source book that uh, I hope some other developers are going to contribute. But if there are nobody so contribute, it's my only homework. And those are my own notes. <laughs>